So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So unexpectedly, I'm in another GWM Canon Lux. So but this time, this is the 4x2 model. So I actually still have the 4x4 lens out with me, but they didn't ask for it back yet. So anyways, I'd like to thank everyone here again to GWM Philippines and to GWM Alabang for making this all possible, including the lens out. So as well, shout out to Miss Josephine, who's the one who made this all possible too, and to Sir L over here, who is assisting me here too in this test there. So the contact details will be in the description down below so what caught my attention immediately when we're uh, with the specific 4x2 Lux model compared with the 4x4 these are running on Cooper on road tires so compared to the uh, all terrain of the saloons that I have with me with the 4x4 so everything here exterior wise load bed is exactly the same so remember if you're new to, to the channel buying this thing is still a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine that produces 160 61 horsepower and 400 and newton meters of torque and as well all canon locks models automatic ones are mated to 8 speed zf automatic transmission so so far so good it feels exactly the same so one key difference here to in the interior well appearance wise the tech is exactly the same but this time you don't have the four low button here on the gear shift that's pretty much it and yeah so far so good and then Okay, performance wise feels exactly the same too okay one difference now I noticed so you have the same driving modes to eco standard normal and sport mode okay let's see what are we in okay so we were in sport mode we started off in sport mode now in comfort mode okay one key difference I immediately uh, felt compared with the Lux 4x4 model is the steering feel. I just started in sport mode which is the heaviest steering amongst the Canon Lux models. This one feels a bit lighter on its feet now with this thing. So here again, let's try sport mode. And remember, all Canon Lux models have bad shifters. Okay, I can definitely feel the the weight of this uh, Canon Lux 4x2 model, it feels a bit lighter than usual now. So, actually, this feels a little bit better to drive. Got to be honest, having driven the Canon Lux 4x4 now for a couple of days now, this puts its part on a little bit better since you don't have the confusion of the driving modes from Eco, Normal, and Sport mode that, like, unlike with the 4x4 that is rear bias and then full-time all-wheel drive, so on and so forth. This one is 4x2 all the time. So, I found sport mode a little bit more exciting to dive in this 4x2 model. And like with the Canon Lux 4x4, wow! Okay, wait, that's another difference too. So, unlike with the 4x4 model, this does not wait anymore on the gear since it doesn't have to power all the four wheels. So, this one, yeah, it feels a little bit more sportier to drive. The ride though, okay, I'll check it out here. So, so far, it feels somewhat as bouncy as the 4x4 but it's given in this uh, class of pickup truck so remember to I did fully in detailed everything in the Canon Lux 4x4 model check it out on my channel like literally everything feels exactly the same here in the interior the space on and so forth so this is one of the more bigger pickup trucks too in its segment okay here's the bumpy part here around in Alabang okay yes it feels a little bit less bouncy now comparing with the 4x4 model so here just bumping around yeah yeah it feels less stiffer okay I would definitely recommend this and I would personally get this over the 4x4 model for obvious reasons because okay the, the ride just is simply better I gotta be honest the 4x4 was a little bit bouncy G3 but then again you have the security of the 4x4 system this one yeah it's somewhat more on road and less tire noise than usual yet again baby it's just down to the tires but NVH overall for both Lux models they are very very good one of the better pickup trucks I've tried out to my channel oh yeah just there's still bounce here and there but it's not so bad comparing with the 4x4 and fuel economy wise okay I'm just driving here around in Alabang okay the figures looks exactly the same so with my heavy footed style yeah this one's just doing seven kilometers per liter so the fuel economy could be much more or less the same too so on better days you can do as much as 8.4 to 9.4 kilometers per liter and then on highway you can do as much as 14.1 kilometers per liter and then here just flying it again wow yeah at higher speeds 
yeah, bit of bounce here and there, but then again, it's not so bad. And this tool, the 4x2 model has paddle shifters. So yeah, it's very sporty to drive. So the 8-speed uh, automatic transmission, yeah, it feels exactly the same. The tuning, eco and normal, yeah, it gear hunts on seat, on the CT drives. But on highway drives, yeah, it will tend to be rev happy than usual. So yeah, that's a quick drive of this Canon Lux 4x2. So apologies for the shaky footage because my tripod broke once again. Anyways, so yeah, for the cost of all of this, this was where it gets interesting now. The 4x2 model costs 1,198,000 pesos. So there's like almost 200,000 pesos difference between both variants. So I think it's a no-brainer that you should get this model because this costs the same as a Ford Ranger XL 4x4 base model. And yet again, this is the middle team value. It's got everything you need. You got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Yet again, there is no 360 degree camera, but you have side corner camera and a reverse camera, which is pretty good. So I assume to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will be as crisp like with the Canon Lux 4x4. So yeah. That concludes my test day review of this Lux 4x2. I'd like to thank everyone here again at GWM Philippines, GWM Alabang. So to Sir Earl and to Ma'am Josephine who made this all possible. So hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more future GWM landouts coming right up. Bye-bye.